Genderlinks has carried out a violence against women baseline study in six other countries. The study aimed to show the rate of gender-based violence in the region, as well as to identify the causes and possible measures needed to address the problem. This study shows that between one in four and two in three women across the region have experienced some form of violence during their lifetime, whether physical, sexual, verbal, emotional, all economic. The SADC protocol on gender and development in articles 20 to 25 uh, speaks about gender-based violence and the provisions that the targets that they would like to reach by 2015. The key target in that section is really about halving the levels of gender-based violence by 2015. Of course the biggest challenge we have in the region is how do we measure that we've reached that target if we don't have baseline data to start with. So GenderLinks, in partnership with the United Nations Economic Commission on Africa and various other experts, including the then UNIFEM, came together and developed a set of indicators that would measure the extent, the effects, uh, the, the prevention, support and response to gender-based violence. To date, GenderLinks has completed that research in four countries, which includes Botswana, Mauritius, Lesotho and Zimbabwe and completed four provinces in Zambia and in South Africa. The findings of the study are quite alarming. The highest prevalence thus far are in the four provinces of Zambia, and the prevalence of violence amongst women in, the, in Zambia is 89%. It is quite, one struggles to understand what the drivers could be, um, you know, and what the research is really showing us is that our strategies have to be relooked. For example, we have very strong legal provisions in most of the countries in SADC and policy frameworks. None of those are being implemented effectively. And a key driver, of course, a key problem in all the countries is the lack of budgetary allocations. The other real issue is that the highest proportion of violence that women are experiencing is actually intimate partner violence, which means this is violence that you're experiencing at the hands of some or your husband or partner. Now, the issue there is, how do you enter people's homes? This is not about a public uh, offense. It's, it's, a, it's an offense that is happening inside people's homes. And how do we address that? And I think that's where Gender Links has moved substantially to talk about how we work with local government to address gender-based violence. It's, it's really important that we work with communities, that we work with homes. Also, the sort of prevailing wisdom for a long time was that uh, poverty and unemployment were key drivers of gender-based violence. The research is showing that that is actually not the case. Uh, you know, in Botswana, for example, the women who were educated and in employment uh, were the pe women who had the highest proportion of, uh, who experienced the highest proportion of violence, and men in the same category were those who had perpetrated the highest proportion of violence. The biggest driver of gender based violence is actually experience of those who have perpetrated and experienced were those who had experienced violence as children. And that includes childhood physical violence, child neglect, and childhood sexual violence. So having experienced it, then people normalize it in their minds and believe that's how you live. So when we speak of the cycle of violence, it's very real, it needs to be broken, and it really requires us to think very strategically about prevention. And prevention at the level of the individual, within families, communities, so we need to move from that high level policy intervention and legislative intervention to a much more localized, uh, customized solution that will get us into people's homes.